Welcome back, everyone, to the My Take Hoops podcast. Today, we are joined by senior Michigan forward and future NBA player Isaiah Livers. Welcome, and how are you doing? Appreciate you having me, man. I'm feeling good. What have you been doing during this time? I know you just, I know you just ended the season a, a few months ago. Uh, what, what have you been doing? I know injury and, and, and whatnot, but uh, update me a little bit on what you've been doing. Yeah, uh, pretty much all I've been doing really is I've been doing a lot of rehab at the University of Michigan, take off Chicago for uh, draft stuff, draft, whatever I can do, combine interviews and like end of this month. So rehab, I sit in a chair, do a bunch of workouts, I shoot, uh, I watch my anime, I watch film. That's, that's all I can do right now. I really can't do much. Okay, fair enough. Uh, but before we really get into it, I, I do want to say congratulations on a great season. I know you guys really wanted to get to the national championship, but none, nonetheless, you guys had a great season. You surprised a lot of people, and it was great to see you guys have success. I appreciate that, man. We just pull it out, work into it, trust our coaching staff, and see how far we can go. Uh, so I want to start kind of with your progression through Michigan basketball. You've played four years uh, for Michigan, and it's not that's not so common anymore. But first, so first of all, what what does Michigan basketball mean to you? Michigan basketball means family. Uh, first, Coach Beeline and Coach Howard. They uh, every, every time like one of them walk into a room, it was greeting, uh, just asking about your day. Not even ask about basketball. So it was a lot more family aspect. We're all brothers. Uh, it was like our father, like our mentor type stuff. We can go to them if we need anything. And I think that was probably the best thing about Michigan basketball is Michigan basketball is always going to be the most connected team and the hardest working team. So it, it just means a lot for sure. Walk me through kind of your your climb through the ranks. So freshman year, you just averaging over 15 minutes a game. And now this year you had over 30 minutes a game. So what what was that kind of climb like from you? you you've seen it all. You were a freshman and then now you're a senior. So, so walk me through that. Uh, it was a lot more just confidence. Uh, my freshman year, I didn't have the most confidence in the world. Uh, you hear it's common for a lot of freshmen, but I always hate it. But, but I like to look back and see how I build, like you talked about my build and each year, you can see I just got more confident with my ability, and I, I put a lot of work into it. So that's why, like, I can go out there and just be super confident in my shot, super confident in my, my playmaking and leadership or whatever else it is. It's just each year you can just tell, like, I got more confident on the floor. And do you think that do you think that confidence is is from Coach Howard, Coach Beeline? Do you think that's from you being in the gym? You think that's from your older teammates, or you, probably a combination of all of it? It's probably definitely a little combination of everything, but probably the most one is me being in the gym. Uh, gym is like my therapy. I'm in the gym all the time, no matter what. My body hurts, okay, I'll just shoot free throws or just shoot some jump shots. Uh, but other than that, that's what gives me the confidence because I know how much work I put into it. Awesome. Uh, and so so from freshman year to senior year, what would you say is probably the biggest area of growth uh, through that four-year span? Definitely uh, creating off the dribble. Uh, I My handling got way better from my freshman year to my senior year. Uh, I was capable to get past defenders, set my own teammates up, uh, even get my own shot. So it was, that was my biggest room of growth because in high school, you know, I was just bigger athletic. I would dribble around people. This is like the Big Ten, the most competitive conference in the league. So I really had to learn how to get, really had to outsmart my defenders and try to get around them. Yeah, can you can you speak to to that that jump from high school? I, I, I've had a few players on before and it, it's a pretty common theme where it's just like, it's, you're not just an athlete anymore when you're, when you're like, you can get away with being an athlete in high school basketball and, and get a bunch of big looks. But like, once you get to college, you got to be a player. You can't be a prospect. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, if I could um, definitely, it would be like you said, it was honestly just these guys are watching film and they're working just as hard as you, if not more than you. So the mindset you have to have in college is you have to outwork not only your teammates, but other players from different teams across the whole nation. So that, I think once once that finally hit me, I just started just try to outwork everybody every day. I would just try to work harder, and then obviously watching film. Uh, high school, you want, when do you really watch that much film in high school? You go out there and just really play open gym basketball. But college is well thought out. These coaches are drawing up plays specifically specifically for your defense or to go at you or whatever. They know every weakness and every strong point you have. So it's it's a little more a game of like dissect, analyze, and you know I enjoyed all four years of it. Yeah, I, I think that kind of goes under the radar a little bit when um, when you're looking at some of the best teams in the nation, like Michigan is top top three team all year, right? And like, I don't think people understand, like sometimes, some some people do, but I think a lot of times people don't understand like all the work that has to go into it. You don't just have a bunch of talented players, like the scouting, the coaching, 
the, the environment, the, the uh, culture that the, is built there, it all has to be there. Yeah, no, if that's not there, you're going to have a losing team. You're going to have a losing environment, a losing culture. So it's all about trying to win each day. Yeah. Uh, so let, let's get into this year specifically. And I, I want to start from the beginning. How did the COVID pandemic really ultimately affect the basketball season from your perspective? Uh, especially just being me, my senior year, my last year, uh, I left, I forego the NBA, came back. I mean, I knew there was going to be a chance there's going to be no fans, but I, you know, I thought they would have tried a lot harder than they did, but you know, you got to respect their decision. But other than that, it was just fans. There was no fans traveling and everything else was normal practice, you know, game, everything was normal. It's just, you go out there and you don't have fans and you're either opposing fans or your fans. Uh, but it was, it was really hard because you just felt like you're playing a scrimmage. You know, every college has like a, a close scrimmage each year. And we had one last year before our season. And it's just like every game felt like a close scrimmage. So it was it was very odd. Yeah, um, I, I think, I, I mean, I watch a lot of games on TV. Obviously, I can't get in the gym. Um, and to me, like and to probably the normal spectator, it kind of looks somewhat normal. But when you have a massive stadium like that, no fans, is it just quiet on the court the entire time? Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's the... 40 people in that area, maybe 50 plus the security guards or ushers, whatever you want to call them. But it's weird. It's very overwhelming. But obviously, once you get out there and start playing, you know, it's just it's basketball at that point. You know, you're just playing a, a not not like a pickup game, but it's kind of yeah. like potatoes, like an open gym type thing. But it was got normal at sometimes. But at points like late in the game, you would expect to hear a fan when you make a big shot or someone else hits a big shot and you don't really hear much besides your team. So it really becomes mental, I'm assuming. It's, it's yeah. Oh, yeah. you got to be locked in. Yeah. Oh, if you're not locked in, everyone's going to tell because now all eyes are new and you can really hear everything on the course. You're going to hear your coach talking to you like, bro, what are you doing? Like, wake up. Yeah. So. yeah. You, you, I'm assuming you graduated. And so you kind of, you had to graduate through COVID. That sucks. Man, the worst thing. Uh, I talked to all my friends that made like my freshman year on campus. And, you know, I just really couldn't see him. I couldn't go hang out. And good, can't you can't be a normal college student? So it was just it was hard because if you wouldn't been a normal college student, you'd have been one of those teams on ESPN at ten in the morning talking about their clothes due to COVID exposure. Yeah. So it was you had to make a sacrifice. And yeah, I'm proud of our sacrifice. Yeah, I'm a I'm a freshman at, at UK right now, and so oh. this is my first year of college, and like I don't do anything. Like yeah. it, it it is what it is, right? You, you I, have I to roll worried. with it. I was worried about you, uh, freshman during COVID nineteen because what's going to happen when things open up like right i'm a i haven't been in a classroom building yet like i'm gonna be a sophomore oh, oh, next year okay. and like i've just been sitting in my dorm i've maybe been in three buildings like i don't know my way around campus that well like yeah for sure uh, it, I, don't, I really don't know what to say like it's gonna be it's gonna be tough for you guys but i, yeah. I guess i hope i hope you have a, a great 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 opportunity there hey thank you i appreciate it um so um, when we when we talk about this year specifically, uh, you get into summer and you in fall practices before the season. When did you realize that this team was special and that could could really do something that could shock the nation and and really put you guys in a t in that top three conversation? Was it before the season? Was it did it take a few games? Was it in practice? Like what what really was was there a moment? I guess that really made you think like wow this team this team is special. Yeah, honestly, it was gonna be. I think I want to say around September, we were able to do a lot more uh, actual practicing and like scrimmage and stuff. That's when you really see what kind of team you have. And coaches did a good job of splitting us all up evenly. So the teams were like not overbalanced, but you don't have like your starters and your like your rotation players, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of mix. So it was it was impressive. Uh, so I have we had like one scrimmage and we were playing maybe like five, five minute quarters because coach Howard loves, you know, he's competitive. He likes to get up and down and play. And man, we went like overtime. It was my, this is probably the most time we've like tied at the end and coach Howard, like, no, we're done. Like, you don't want to kill your legs. We have <laughs> tomorrow. So we're done there, but we wanted to play. And it was just, that's when I was like, okay, yeah, this team is different. Everybody's fighting. They all want spots. Everybody wants to play. Everybody wants to win. So that I knew for a fact that we were going to be a good team this year. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's got to be kind of a cool feeling, like, as a senior, to just be like, wow, I have a chance to to lead this type of, this group of guys. Um, can you can you speak a little bit to to that mentality coming in as a senior, where it's just like, I'm top dog now, where you kind of, like, kind of are expected to lead these guys. So what, what what's that mentality like? 
Yeah, uh, honestly, it, if anything, it raises your play. Um, I'm not one to be a nervous person because things are going to happen. When it, things are going to happen no matter what. I can't control them. All I can do is control myself. So knowing that all these guys are looking up to me and, you know, looking to me for an answer, I just did my best to try to always have an answer for them. If not, try to find the answer for them. But I'm more a lead by example. I'm not sitting there going to like – you've seen the Michael Jordan last dance. Yeah, yeah. Like, bark you out. Like I'm more like – you know, just watch me, watch how I do it. And then let's see if you can do it. So yeah, I did a lot of that, especially with a lot of freshmen that were new here. Um, they had to learn the system and we learned it quicker because honestly, when we weren't able to be in the gym, we were watching film with the freshmen, uh, the leader, like the seniors, we were trying to get them to watch the film, you know, get them upgraded on our defense and our offense. So, it, you know, it just honestly raised my level of play. And I, I was excited to wake up and lead them every practice. That's that's cool because I think a lot of times, or not a lot of times, but you can hear some stories where it's like there's some disconnect between the seniors and the freshmen, and uh, and I think it speaks a lot to the culture that that Beeline and, and Howard have have created, where it's I feel like everyone, you, like you said at the beginning, it's family. Everyone is involved. Everyone is together, and I mean you have to have that to be a successful program. Um, I want I want to ask specifically about Hunter Dickinson. I don't think many people expected him to be as impactful as he was this year. Uh, what did you notice about him that made him jump off the page right away? I mean, obviously sheer size, but is there anything else? His IQ, his passing ability. He got double teamed a lot. Uh, and that opened up a lot of shots for me and our, like, our other wings. Um, he, he's a force down there. He's, he's so much touch around the rim. But I, definitely the most thing that stands out the most is his IQ for the game. His awareness is off the charts. Uh, he's a smart kid, smart kid in the classroom, smart kid off the court, walking around, and obviously smart kid on the court. So, he has a tremendous upside. Um, he, a lot of guy, a lot of people will see it next year. You know, he's gonna work on everything that people are talking about. It is weaknesses, and he's just gonna show that he he's always had it. He's just gotta have the confidence to go out there and do it. I love it. I love it. So for you personally, you averaged thirteen point one points and then six rebounds per game this year on forty one or forty three point one percent shooting from three. How would you describe your performance for this team uh, for this specific year? Because you were an integral piece to this team. So so what is what is your takeaway from your play this year? What I love the most about this team is everybody had a big night. Uh, there wasn't just a consistent guy. It wasn't just me, Franz Hunter. It was Eli sometimes. It was Mike. It was Sean D. Brown. It was Brandon Johns, Terrence Williams. Uh, I think that's what made us so impactful. I think, like I said, that raises my level of play. When my teammates are playing well, it's not – like I'm the type of player that my level of play is going to raise no matter what, because now the ball is moving around and that's going to create open opportunities. And I think that's what I took a lot of advantage of. Uh, obviously the goal was who can stop Hunter down there. Let's get it down there and see what they're going to do. They double team, go right back to me. I shoot, I pass, I drive. Like that's everybody. That was everybody's mindset. So it was, we knew the ball was going to go down low. We just were ready for it to come back out because Hunter's a smart kid. He's not going to force dumb shots. We had nobody on our team that wanted to be selfish and force dumb shots. You see, I think Hunter averaged, what, 14? Like, most teams usually have a guy that averaging, like, 18, 19, and the guy goes, then the next guy is, like, 11, 12. So we were well diverse, and that opened a lot of opportunities for my play this year. Yeah, I think I think that that group of top three teams that was pretty consistent all year, uh, you, Gonzaga, Baylor, the one thing you guys all had in common is you find the right player. Like a lot of people like to to look at stats and say, oh, they don't have a guy that is averaging 20. They're probably not going to do that well. Like I look at these stats where it's got, you guys have guys, anybody that can produce. Like you said, like you have any guy that can go off any night. And that, that makes you guys so dangerous. That's the, the reason why Gonzaga was dangerous. Baylor is dangerous. That's the reason you guys were dangerous. And I think that's ultimately why you guys were a top three team consistently all year. Like you, you throw any, any of you three fully healthy teams into the mix. Like, someone like any wedding could walk away with a win because you have so many guys that can produce. And I think that kind of gets under talked a little bit with the Michigan team. You guys are unselfish. I, I watched a lot of games this year. And I just couldn't like specifically the one against Northwestern where it was just a massacre. Like you got, you, everyone was going, like everyone was going off that game. Like yeah. I didn't like, I, they were going off, they were open. So let them pay. Right. And, and, when you're up that big, it's so easy to to try and become the hero or trying to just continue to be like to be selfish. But like, I remember watching that game and being like, Michigan just doesn't stop passing. They're up 40 yeah. and they're still passing to the right guy. Yeah, no, yeah, you definitely know the game of basketball because a lot of guys, like you said, look at stats. Like, oh, that makes them a good player. I mean, I'm not, I don't give a f about stats. <laughs> Anyways, I never cared about stats in my life. I just want to win. 
and like being at Michigan and Coach Howard coming in. Obviously, Coach Beeline, he wanted to win as well, but Coach Howard, like, he's a competitor, man. And that's he said he sat us all down. Like everybody on the team has said, we're not gonna have one guy who's averaging twenty. We're gonna share the ball. We're gonna play the game the right way. If you don't want to play the game the right way, get out of my gym. Yeah. We all looked at them and said, we here to play. We want to win too, coach. And it's just so unfortunate, your injury, because like I said, you were such a big, such a big piece to that team. And I really think that having you in the tournament would have come out with a different uh, outcome. But uh, are you are you healing, healing up a little bit? Like what's what's the timetable yeah. kind of on, uh, on that injury? When I first got it or before I even got it, they said I wasn't going to be ready until like fully September. That's still in the news that people – I don't think I'm gonna be ready till NBA training camp next year. So, other than that, I just got checked out honestly yesterday in Indiana, and he said his healing at a faster rate. Uh, he was patting himself on the back. He did a great mm -hmm. job, great surgery. Uh, but I'm back to walking in a boot right now. So I was on crutches and a, uh, a scooter for about what has it been a month, month and a half now since the surgery. So I'm healing good. Doctor says I'll, I'll probably be back before he, everybody else even thinks so. So oh, that's great. Good. And yeah, I'm able to like, obviously I wanted to do the workouts, the workouts mm -hmm. would help like your draft stock, mm -hmm. me being hurt. And the last thing you see is me hurt is not, a good not great. Else, yeah. But other than that, um, I'll find a team who takes me uh, Yeah. whenever, like, I don't, I don't, it doesn't matter to me. I'll get drafted. I just want to help a team win. Honestly. Yeah. I mean, that's the great thing about the NBA and basketball in general. If you can play, people are going to find you and but, you'll, you'll, if you can play, you'll make your way onto a team. And the oh, same yeah. thing that's happening with, uh, Kenyon Martin Jr. right now he's he's playing really well and like scouts were low on him and yeah like because he's because because he could shoot okay right he could, other things though he's uberly athletic so he goes out there he's in a perfect situation at Houston like all you can do is be happy for the guy he worked yeah. hard really yeah the floor. yeah and so and and in this tournament when when you're when you're injured uh, it's got it's obviously a bummer but how do you get yourself to go out there and sit on the bench like how, how do you get yourself to still contribute and, and what do you bring to the table? You think when you're, uh, it's obviously a lot of, of speaking to your teammates and, and encouraging them, but uh, can you describe kind of what your mindset was going into that? Uh, at first it was tough. You know, I was just, you know, and the natural human being reaction is like, you know, kind of like sulk for a little bit. You go to a little dark place for a second. I didn't even get the chance to do that. I had coach Howard, my brother is right here in my ear because we're in a bubble. So I just had them, no family. And they, like we talked about, they are our family. Well, they are still my family. And they helped me stay together, uh, stay like mentally positive. But like you said, I was speaking to them, telling guys where to go, helping my John, Brandon Johns and Terrence Williams, helping them guys out. And, you know, all I could really do is just motivate them and give them a little secret sauce, like secrets to the game. But uh, it was tough. I'm not going to lie. It was tough to get out there. But, you know, our ultimate, our pact was to win a national championship. So I did everything in my power to prepare them. That, that was in our practices in the bubble, uh, tell them to eat right, make sure they watch their film the day before. I, was, I just tried to be that little side coach for them. And I'm sure they appreciate that because it's a different type of like uh, connection with the players. Like obviously the coaches and the players are close, but like when it's player to player, like I remember playing, like obviously it doesn't really equate. It's high school. It's, it's small small high school basketball in Ohio, but uh, like if someone was injured and like our player, like my teammate would come up to me and say, Hey, you got to do this, 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 like that made me motivated, uh, like to a different extent, like than the coach saying that. And I think yeah. obviously if you have a good relationship with your teammates, then that you, like you can, you can still be really effective, even though you're not playing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not coach Howard. I'm not coach Saudi coach Martelli coach Isley or anything, but you know, I, I played, I was playing with them. So I know what's going on out there. I think that's the best thing about a player's coach is they were out there. And I think that's what coach Howard is. He's the ultimate player's coach. So he understands. Talk to me about hashtag not NCAA property. You were one of the, the fa like not founders, uh, but like one of the lead guys uh, kind of, kind of going out and being public about that. Uh, talk to me about that. Uh, it was, uh, we didn't really want to make it a movement. We wanted to make it like an essential, like, this is like, this is how it's supposed to be. Like right. what's going on in NCA is not how it's supposed to be. Like colleges are making so much money off people's faces, their names, their jerseys, whatever you want, like name image likeness. And it's, it's a problem because it's a lot of college kids, a lot of college kids they, they can, they don't have the time to go get a job and go work. And you know, you hear the students complain about, well, they get all these other benefits. Okay. We get a pair of gear and a, 
stipend each month and we go about another day like we still got to eat we still have to live our life like we're not robots i think yeah yeah the essential thing is we're not robots yeah and just because you got 100k instagram followers or whatever does not mean like like well, you can't do anything with it when you're under cool. the NCAA. Like, that's that's yeah. cool. Like, that's not it's not really helping our I mean it's gonna help after college, but during yeah. college, obviously we're not allowed to accept like gifts and benefits and stuff, but there's no reason for that. There's no in my mind, there is no reason why a player a it's person a person should not be able to build their brand in college. I, right. That's probably like, they look at us as players, not not people. Like that is that's ridiculous to me. Like Jordan McCabe, right, for example. He has his Instagram and, or I mean, he has his YouTube channel and podcast with overtime. He can't make anything from that because he's under the NCA. Like that is so like, I, I don't know. Like if you, if you wanted to pick up and start some type of building your brand out on YouTube or something, and people would love that. People would really watch that because you're Isaiah livers, right? So you can't make a dime off that. That is ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Uh, and you know, the best thing, I think the, thing that really helped the movement like because it's moving in a great pace right now we got president Emmert on board we met with him multiple times and the best thing about it is is now these student athletes won't feel so bottled up they'll be able to do what they love to do they'll be able to create their art and sell it for money if they want to they'll be able to create music and sell it if they want to like we won't feel like bottled up and you know obviously we signed a contract to NCA, but it's not the right thing it's, it's really inhumane if you actually think about it yeah I mean, you can even argue the point that it like for mental health, like you can't just like if you just sit in and be a basketball player, be a swimmer or be a cross country runner and that's all you're allowed to do, like you're going to go insane. Right. Yeah. Like there's got to be some different outlet. I mean, there um, there can be other unhealthy outlets so that the NCAA could be unknowingly pushing you towards uh, whether that's drugs, alcohol, whatever. But like. I mean, they're kind of doing it to themselves, right? Like let yeah. these kids have a healthy outlet and make like. It, it makes no sense to me how how players people cannot make money off of their brand that they're building just because they play at, in the, under the NCAA. It makes no sense to me. Yeah, no, it's 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 the dumbest. It's probably the dumbest thing I've come across since I've. Been <laughs> um, so as you look forward to the future and the NBA uh, draft approaches, what what does being an NBA player mean to you? It means a lot. Uh, honestly, I grew up playing baseball. Baseball was my number one priority and then came basketball. Uh, but once I've got, once I found the love for basketball, it was no stopping me. Like I, I trained nonstop because I'm what you consider probably one of those late bloomer. I played baseball to like junior year, uh, travel baseball to like eighth grade, freshman year. So I was primarily a baseball player. So I had to like really shift my focus toward basketball and start, start focusing on that and playing like, you know, just studying these players, you know, taking some of their moves. Cause that's what basketball is. You're just taking each other's moves and it's going to be, it's going to be a life, life changing moment for me because it's yeah. been a new since my freshman year of high school. So you picked up a basketball freshman year and started really taking it seriously your high school, freshman year of high school? Played like before that, but I wasn't like training. Like I didn't really start training and probably till sophomore year of high school. Wow. That is impressive. That is really impressive. I mean, I'm just I'm still learning more every day. And you know, you, you never stop learning about basketball, but, you know, I still learn new things like almost every day about basketball by just having a conversation with somebody. So it's exciting. That's why I'm excited to be an NBA player because who knows what else I can learn for basketball as I'm playing basketball. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think it is that you can bring to an NBA organization? Oh, I'm the type of thing I have is first, I'm a, I'm a winner. Like that's the number one thing on my belt is I love to win. I know how to win. I spread the floor of my shooting capability, uh, longer closeouts. Guys will have to either uh, honor my three or run me off a three. And then that just gives me a lot of pull up or all the way to the basket. I think the nice thing about me is I'm a willing passer. Uh, I don't, I don't hold on to the ball. I don't like to do all the dribbling unless it's like five seconds on the shot clock. That's when I'll have to get in my bag and get a shot up or something like that. But I think me spreading the floor and me being a winner and me being also versatile, I can guard multiple positions, is going to really help me get on the floor. Absolutely. That's exactly where the NBA is going. If you can shoot, play multiple positions, and create for others, you, you probably have a pretty good chance of, exactly. of doing well in the league. Um, is, there a, is there a player that you liken yourself to or uh, compare yourself to or look to to try and to emulate or anything like that? Uh not as much as you would think. I watch if this. I watch a lot of film on players. Like for instance, I watch a lot of Kawhi, Paul George, uh, Chris Middleton, 
And recently I've been watching, this is going to surprise a lot of people. I've been watching a lot of Mikael Bridges. Uh, okay. Him being on that Suns team, he cuts the basket. And he he sprints the lane. And he plays defense. And he just – The small things. It's yeah, the he, gets, things. he does the small things and he gets to open spots. So I kind of just – I've been watching a lot of film on him lately to how I, how I can help a team next year by not just, you know, standing in the corner and being ready to shoot or just – being top of key, ready to drive downhill, but you know, moving without the ball, that's very important, especially when you got guys like CP3 and James Harden. They're all in the league. They're gonna be doing all the dribbling. I gotta find what I can do. Yeah, for sure. And and for Michigan this year, uh, this next year, they have the number one ranked recruiting class coming in. Um, and and as a senior, you've been around the block with with the program and university life in general. Uh, so is there any advice that you would offer to them as players and also as people going into college? Um, and then just going to the University of Michigan. Uh, basketball wise, um, stay true to your diet. It's really going to help you. Cause if you're not ready when you get here, coach Howard will definitely make sure you, you're ready. Um, you know, just try to get out. Like, don't, don't, don't. I think the main thing about freshmen coming in is they want to work out. Yes. They want to show the coach that they work out. They have good, good, uh, good habits, but also it's good. Like you said, to get out and do other things besides basketball, really take your mind and just your physical body away from the court for a second. It's okay to have two hours to yourself to do whatever you like to do, your hobby. You want to go walk around campus. Like right now, it's beautiful outside. Like I would encourage them to get out and just go walk around. That's that's advice, honestly, I'd give myself my freshman year because I was always trying to be in the gym, do all that, burn my body down instead of just enjoying the campus, enjoying life itself. So that's – that's the best thing about University of Michigan. There's nothing but property and land that they can just go walk, you know, just get their mind off things. Yeah. I mean, I visited uh, University of Michigan when I was looking at colleges and it's huge. Like there's three separate campuses virtually, right? It's like North Campus. Oh, East. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like whatever, like I was like, there's, this is huge. Like if you, yeah. if you want to go out and just get your mind right, like just go on a walk like you're you're gonna see something and, and downtown ann arbor is, is great like beautiful right yeah that's really all i've got for you I, I really thank you for taking the time to do this i know you're busy i know it took a, a little bit to coordinate this but uh yeah i do appreciate it and i wish you the best of luck in your basketball journey and uh i was and do you have any questions for me or any last remarks for the listeners no nah, man i just everybody's watching you know listen to this guy he knows basketball at a young age I just encourage him to be the best he can every day. And I appreciate you for having me on, man. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm, it means a lot.